So while they uh, start bringing out beers and food and so on, I want to introduce our first speaker, Jamie, uh, from New Beat Market. Jamie is the co-owner of New Beat Market here in Brunswick Landing, working with Seeds of Independence, which is uh, also here on the landing as well. Um, she currently resides in Harpswell and is a former Mainer who left, just want to note that, but uh, did return. Jamie lived in Ghana doing volunteer work for a little while and loves to grow her own food. Uh, which ties in nicely with the business. She recently relocated, uh, unbeknownst to Nate, uh, four chickens into their bathtub of their home. Um, I've heard that they have since vacated the, uh, the bathroom, but uh, anyhow, you're welcome. Uh, so, Jamie. Good afternoon or evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, so, I get to start us off, which definitely makes me a little bit nervous, and um, to, to kind of break you guys in with a little, uh, uh, what's the word I want, um, confession, I just recently found out I was going to be up here. Um, my, my lovely partner kind of mentioned I was going to be talking tonight, and I was like, oh, Nate can talk, it'll be great. And then like a little more recently, he's like, no, no, you have to do it yourself. Like, oh, okay. So, um... I kind of, I means I guess I get to set the tone for tonight and uh, kind of break you all in. So hopefully I'm telling the story I'm supposed to be up here. And if I don't, then Nate and Paul can kind of set us on the right course for the rest of the evening. Uh, so I'm going to start with telling you all a little bit about myself and talking about how the restaurant started, kind of what a day looks like there, the challenges we've faced, and then the kind of things that make it worth doing every day. So to start with myself, I've already been introduced, thank you, I don't know where he went, but um, I'm from Maine and I spend a lot of time living outside of Maine because I think it's really, really important that we expose ourselves to different ways of thinking and viewing the world so that we're better able to face the challenges that, that kind of come at us. And I know that sounds a little bit cookie cutter, but it was really important to me to do that. Um, so I lived in the, mid the Midwest and I lived in the South and I lived in Ghana and I backpacked different parts of the world. Um, but I thought it was really important to come home because Maine is home. Maine is where my friends and my family are and, and it has these four seasons that make living here uh, so incredible. You know, the pace changes and they, they kind of chart the course of our lives and it, it's something a lot of the country and the world don't have is this exposure to, to a, different, a different geography every four months. So it was really important for me to come home. Um, so I lived a lot of places by myself and then I went back to college. I kind of did the, the non-conventional or maybe the currently conventional route of taking a long time to do it. Uh, so I, I went off and traveled and I came back and that is where I met Nate. And Nate and I moved out to the Midwest together with the idea that we were gonna come home. And then this opportunity presented itself in the form of Nate's job and we scurried right back here as fast as we could. And uh, we did a year down in Portland, no offense to any Portlanders, but we were like, okay, Time to go, time to leave Portland, and we moved up here to Harpswell. Um, my family has a lot of ties to this community, so my parents bought a home to retire into, and they asked Nate and I if we wanted to live up here. And we went, ocean, beautiful countryside, a great community, sign us up. And then we moved up here. And that is, our move up here is what introduced us to the community and things going on in the landing um, in Brunswick. And the, the restaurant was not, was not, it wasn't on the plan. It wasn't something that Nate and I set in front of us and said, let's do, or something I set for myself and said, let's do. I actually, last time I worked at a restaurant, I went, I'm done. I'm never doing this again. I've had enough, because I did it all through college and I did it right out of college to help make ends meet, because I think most college kids are kids right out of college these days. They, making ends meet is definitely can be a challenge. So I waited tables on the side along with my full-time job. Um, so when we moved home, and Nate, we moved home for Nate's job, so it was really easy for him, or not easy for him, that's not what I meant to say. He had a job. I moved home without a job, and I'm sure as many of you are professionals here, you've probably run amongst it yourself. Finding a job in Maine can be, can be really hard. Um, so I spent about a year trying to find a job. So in, in that time, I did contract work, I did um, graphic design work, I volunteered with various nonprofits, um, trying to kind of make a, make a hole while I searched for the right thing. And that coincided with our move up to Harpswell. 
Um, I had actually just finished a stint with Mafka. They put on the Common Ground Country Fair. I was one of the, there's a three person team that puts that, that fair on. I was one of the people that did that. So I was fresh out of that contract and Nate and I were living up here and we met with Seeds of Independence. And Seeds of Independence is the nonprofit that I own New Beat with and they work with at-risk youth in the Midcoast area. So me looking for work and, and Nate was acting as a consultant at that time, we got hired by them to look at ways that they could decrease their operational costs as a way to facilitate the work they do with the kids. And if any of you are familiar with the nonprofit um, funding model or just in general are really familiar with it, you know that uh, nonprofits are really dependent on grants and donations to cover their operational costs and their programming. So. We were working with them to try to make they, them run a little bit more efficiently. And at the same time, the former tenant at New Beat Market had left. Um, so Nate and I and a, a number of other people kind of looked at that building and said, wouldn't it be really interesting if you use this empty space next to you, because New Beat's located right next to Seeds of Independence, use it in a way to integrate with your mission. And they were kind of like, okay, tell us what that would mean. So. We put together a couple of business models options for them. We're like, okay, here you go, have fun. And then they asked us, they're like, well, would you guys mind presenting this business model at a Shark Tank style competition? And Nate and I went, okay, we, we could do this. Yeah, sure. So we presented that week. We spent a weekend at a, like this this competition. It was kind of a getaway. It was hosted by Bowden, and we presented and we tied for second place. So then the nonprofit was like, hey, you guys interested in running this? And Nate and I were like, no, we, we, have, we have our own thing. <laughs> um, and somewhere that no turned into a yes for Jamie. I'm still very unclear on the details of how I got from there to here, but here I am. Um, so we set to work and we, went, we, were, we set to work fast. So. Um, if you guys don't know anything about restaurants, to get one going um, takes anywhere from six to 18 months. We did it in three months. We worked really, really hard. We worked around the clock to pull it all together. Um, and in that time, we designed, like, kind of fleshed out the business model, pulled together the funding, um, hired the staff, trained the staff, put together a... Uh, menu worked with the state of Maine and the town of Brunswick to rush our licensing because licensing in itself can take up to three months, if not longer. That's assuming you don't run into any snags. So we had a lot of people kind of going to bat for us because we designed this business model that, that integrated with a nonprofit. Um, so I think it was the last week of February in 2016. We were up, we opened our doors, and we ran with it. Um, but when we, we actually designed the business, we, the, the impetus for the business was the integration with the nonprofit. So what that means is we were trying to design a business that offered a way for Seeds to have a semi-reliable um, funding source. As I mentioned earlier, nonprofits are dependent on grants and uh, donations. So we were trying to offer a business model, which is actually really common in other parts of the country, where there's some sort of recurring revenue that will help um, the nonprofit cover its operational costs. We also wanted to offer programming for the kids. Um, so that, that means that we design internships for high school students. So we have kids from right now one high school, next year we're going to two that will get credit with their high schools for coming into the restaurant and working with us as an alternative to like a vac, uh, sorry, a tech or a vote program. So I, we have a couple different internships. We have like a very basic one where the kids just learn really how to be inside of a workplace and they learn how to be part of a team and to take responsibility for their actions and be accountable for what they're doing. And then we have a much more advanced internship that allows um, kids to help plan the menu, because we offer school lunch, um, but they help plan the menu, they help cost it out, they help, they learn how to build databases and spreadsheets, they know, learn how to make yield um, calculations, um, and to alter a recipe to meet a price point, because that's all really important in, in any business, but especially in restaurants, because restaurant profit margins are, if you're lucky, maybe 10%. If you're more normal, 7%. So it, it, it's really important with restaurants to try and meet those margins. Um, 
So we designed that internship to try and give kids uh, like this, this experience in computers and databases and, and some real life problems. Um, and if they're really interested in food, how to plan a recipe, how to prep for it, how to buy for it. Um, so we have those internships. And then we really wanted to source locally, which I think probably I'll see a lot of familiar faces. So a lot of you already know that because you come into the restaurant, which thank you. We love it. Um, but we really wanted to shop, uh, buy our food locally because that means that our neighbors, the farmers and the producers and the distributors, the people that we know from down the street make a living. It means that when I spend a dollar on food that I serve people, 95 cents of that dollar stays in the state of Maine and then gets spent with another Maine family and another Maine worker and another Maine worker. Like, say, one of my staff buys something from Wayfair that Paul helped facilitate because that dollar stayed with them instead of being sent to New York or Mexico or California or something like that. And it, it, it's it's really important that, or at least it is to me, and I think probably most of you, that Maine has an economy that's strong and can offer people jobs and, and people can pay their bills and take care of their families. So we really wanted to source locally for those reasons um, to keep those dollars here in the state. Um, so those were kind of the pillars we built the restaurant upon. So in any given day, we're trying to run the business side of the restaurant, but we're also trying to make sure we're meeting all of these social goals. Um, and, and to be perfectly honest, and I probably shouldn't say this, the whole reason the restaurant exists is for those social goals and for the community it creates. I mean, there's a lot of restaurants in the world. We didn't need to put another one out there. But we did need to kind of help, help make the world and the community that we're a part of better. And I know that sounds like one of those like, pretty things you read or that cookie cutter thing, but I really, really do mean it. That was, that was Those are... That is the driving force behind New Beat and what we're doing um, was that sense of community. And more importantly, the sense of community here, as I think probably a lot of you know the history of the landing and how it was the Naval Air Station and was given back to the, the town and the community. And they've been, we've been putting in businesses like Monlika, Wayfair, um, Savalinx, uh, a bunch of nonprofits, a bunch of schools, Harpsville Coastal Academy, Pathways, um, First Light has gone in, formerly Oxford Networks, for those of you who aren't familiar with the name change. Um, the Real School, which is part of the Brunswick School Department, is going in over there, but we wanted to be part of the community here and, and offer food, because, you know, people bond and make decisions and live life over food, so if you're going to work somewhere and be somewhere, you've got to have something to eat. So we, this was a perfect location to kind of meld together a lot of these important pieces that make a community and make a business viable. Um, which is what brought us here, and specifically, I guess, under this umbrella at Flight Deck Brewing. Um, so that's kind of how we constructed the business and, and why we constructed the business. Um, and I guess probably maybe some of you might wonder is what a day looks like at New Beat. So I'm going to provide you a little insight. Um, I've already said every day we're trying to make the business work while reaching... Um, while maintaining our mission goals, if you will. But uh, a kind of a typical day at Newbie, it, for me anyway, is it's kind of like crisis management every day. That's what, that's what food service is and that's what retail is. And I think a lot of you are probably aware that the seasonal businesses in Maine and the retail businesses the last few years have had a really hard time finding staff. We fall right into that category. So we spend a lot of any day um, trying to make sure that we're able to serve our customers while also... Um, get all the food out and get all the work done. So for those of you that have been patient with us on any given day, we appreciate it. Thank you. Um, but we spend a lot of our day doing that, um, all of us. So we have a, a very small staff. Um, so we, you know, we get in the morning, we start baking, we start doing dishes, we start doing prep for every day because a lot of the food we make is prepped that day. So in case any of you all have been in and been like, oh, why don't they have X today? It's probably because it didn't show up on the delivery truck we ordered, so it would be there that morning for us to prep it for you. Um, so it's us going, oh no, we don't have this meat in, or we don't have this cheese in, how do we substitute this? Or how do we communicate to our customer that we, um, we, gotta, we gotta make a substitution? So we run around doing that most of the time. That's <laughs> a lot of the fun, I guess. 
Um, and I spend a lot of my time making sure that we are meeting compliance. So we preserve, we serve food, as you all know. And in the state of Maine and across the country, there's a lot of regulations that you have to meet. So a lot of my job any day, every day, and Elida, who you all met earlier, is making sure that we're meeting health code and that stuff is staying at the right temperatures and isn't out too long, um, and that we're meeting cleanliness standards. Um, we're that sort of fun and interesting thing. Um, and yeah, I think I'm spinning here about what our day looks like. So sorry, I'm going to rein myself in. Um, that's what a day looks like. Um, and there, I think, I guess this is, I'm talking about also being an entrepreneur and starting a business in this community and or any community. And I will say that um, it, it's, it's a lot of work. It, it is. It's very, very long days. So for anyone that has considered that maybe wanting to run their own business or start it, uh, I would say very heavily consider the amount of time and you're basically going to put your life into it. Um, so consider that and, and as I say that and, and kind of talk about what that means for an individual, there are a lot of really beautiful things that come out of doing something that you put your life into and, and um, you give so much of yourself to and you work so many hours for. And for me, there, there's the, the things that we do for the kids and in the community, but at the end of the day, the, the most important things to me are the relationships that we have with the people that come into our restaurant. So my staff and myself, I'd say we know like 60% of our customers' names. We know their life stories. We sit there and, and on a, if on a slow day or maybe a day where both parties are trying to ignore the fact that we have to go to work. We kind of talk about life and, and the different ways that we view it, um, which is really integral to community. It's a place where people come together and talk. And that definitely happens at New Beat. I think if any of you have come in and you recognize me or Elida or even Nate, you've probably sat there and talked to one of us for a few minutes. And that is one of the most beautiful things about running a restaurant or running a business where you interact daily with your customers is, is learning their life and, and sharing with them. Um, so that's one of the things that makes it really worth it for me. Um, and it's the, the other thing is the people I work with. Um, I wanted, when we set out to start the restaurant, I really, really wanted to create a place where people came into work and they liked going to work and they felt respected and they felt um, safe and they felt like they were among friends. So when we started the restaurant, we worked really, really, really hard to create that culture um, in the uh, within the staff. Um, and we, we hope that we created it in such a way that when people came in, they felt that warmth and they felt that that um, openness and that trust and respect that we have for one another. So every day, the people that I get to work with and the people that work for me are one of the most important things. Um, and one of the reasons I do it, because I, I know there, I, you know, I see Elida as a single parent, and one of my other cooks moved here from Ohio, and I have a baker that isn't a baker, but wanted to try something new with her life, so she came in and said, I'll bake for you, and she's a problem solver, and she taught herself how to bake, and she does it for us, and I have college kids and I have high school kids and I have kids that come from really really rough backgrounds I have a teen parent that works for me and the restaurant's one of the few places where she's told she has value and so those people and doing that good for the people that I work with and work for me is is probably the biggest thing that gets me up every morning and gets me through the doors when when I'm going to have a day that involves me giving my whole self to it so um, that is a really quick, really fast conversation about Newbie Market. <laughs> so.